What we're doing this time is we're going to show that a function has exactly one real root. These problems are more difficult than a lot of the other ones in calculus because it doesn't give you a set algorithm for computing derivatives or computing limits or these types of things. What we have to use is logic and they're case sensitive so each function we may have to do slightly different strategies to prove or argue why we have at most one root or at least one root or exactly one real root and what we're going to use is the intermediate value theorem and Rolle's theorem now that we have enough material to show that there's exactly one real root so before I start I have exactly one real phone in my pocket so what do I have to do to convince you that I, of this statement what I have to do is I have to use the intermediate value theorem and produce a root so there's the phone the phone exists then what I have to do is I'm going to use Rolle's theorem and argue by reductio ad absurdum or proof by contradiction to show that's turning the pocket out <laughs> turning the pocket out says that I have at most one phone in my pocket so I had at most one phone and at least one phone which means exactly the moral here is exactly as two statements I have at least one phone and I have at most one phone the moral of the story is I need to do two statements. I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem to prove that the root exists, and then I'm going to use Rolle's theorem to show that there are no more, and that'll give us exactly one. Oh, there's an error there. That should have been a minus. Minus, otherwise it wouldn't have worked out, and you would have seen me stumble right away. I was like, what's going on? You got to cook these up so they're nice and easy. That should have been a negative, not a positive. Showing that functions have real roots is not an easy game. We give you fa fairly nice ones, or I give myself nice ones. So, that's a minus. <laughs> what I have to do is, and what I noticed immediately, what, what the error was, I need to show that my function has a positive value and a negative value. And then in that interval, it had to cross the, by the intermediate value theorem. If I can show my function has a negative value in an interval and then a positive value and then is continuous, there has to be some value at which it crosses the x-axis, which means there is a root. That's the idea of using the intermediate value theorem. So that's what we're going to use. And so th this one's relatively easy. All I have to do is find a positive value and a negative value and we're in business. So <clears throat> if I look at this and be lazy and I was silly there too, but if I put two in there, I'm going to get two to the 2019 plus two times 2020 minus 2021, which I hope you're convinced is a positive number. I'm not calculating what that is. I don't know how to calculate it. Your calculator won't even do it. It'll say error, probably. <laughs> That's a lot of atoms. So I need a positive value. I got two. It gives me a positive value. At one, I would have been, actually, I would have got zero. So then that actually gives us the root. Boop, boop, boop. I found one. F of zero. F of zero is equal to negative 20, 21, which is less than zero. So cleverly with this function, you'll see in a second, I almost the surprise but or ruin the surprise what that says is somewhere between zero and two at two I was positive somewhere extremely large not to scale and then at zero I was negative so that says somewhere in that interval between zero and two there has to be at least one real root so what do we say therefore since Now that we don't need the details, all we're arguing is this. F of 2 was positive and F of 0 was negative. Thus, by the intermediate value theorem, you have to tell us what you're using to conclude this. There is a C inside 0, 2 such that f of c is 0, or we have a root. So there is at least one c. Term c is 1. So, <laughs> it turns out <clears throat> we do indeed have a root, but we want to make sure that there's no more now, too. So, what does that mean? Now we're going to use another theorem, which we had to wait for in the course, in, in the introductory calculus course, you have to wait to get this. Now we have derivatives and we have Rolle's theorem, and what Rolle's theorem is essentially the bump theorem. So we're going to go over this, it also has several conditions. What I need is, I need f of a to equal f of b for some interval, so that it comes back on itself. 
I also need that F is continuous on the closed interval AB. And I need that F is differentiable on the open interval AB that I'm trying to consider. R function is a polynomial. It's continuous on R, it's differentiable on R, and here's the clever idea of how to use Rolle's theorem. Because we are going to assume two roots, that's what where we get the f of 0 equals the other root. They're going to both equal 0. So these conditions have to be satisfied for Rolle's theorem. Because our function is a polynomial, it's continuous on all intervals and differentiable on all intervals. What we're going to do to show that there's at most one real root, we're going to use the negation of that and assume that there is at least two or more real roots. So assume by contradiction that f has at least two distinct real roots x1 not equal x2 what we're going to do with that is we're going to use Rolle's theorem to argue why we get a logical contradiction under this assumption so if we assume that, what we have exactly is that f of x1 equals 0, which equals f of x2, and x1 doesn't equal x2, so I actually have an interval because they're distinct values. Actually, it's useful to draw the picture now, so because we're talking about two functions now. The function n is derivative, and this gets complicated when we argue this. But the idea is we're using reductio ad absurdum, proof by contradiction. So what I do is I assume the opposite of what I want, I get a contradiction under that, and then what I wanted must be true. So I wanted at most one real root, so I'm going to assume there's two or more. What does that do for me? I have to get two contradictory statements. <laughs> First of all, what that says is it'll just be easier to the cats harassing everybody in behind the scenes. It'll be easier to just let them outside than to continue. <laughs> So, what I want to do is, now I'm going to use Rolle's theorem. Assuming I have at least two roots, I know that they're both equal to zero, so their values are equal at the endpoints of this interval. I know that f is continuous on the closed interval x1, x2, without loss of generality. x1 is less than x2, it doesn't really matter if you're worried about this. <laughs> See another video on this. So. And then f is definitely differentiable on the open interval x1, x2 because it's continuous on all intervals. So it satisfies Rolle's theorem. And what that says is now the conclusion of Rolle's theorem is there has to be a c value inside this interval where the derivative is zero or the slope of the tangent line is flat. There's a horizontal line in there. It's a bump theorem. Rolle's theorem guarantees there's a bump. Why is that a problem? This argument just claimed that if I assume I have at least two real distinct roots, my derivative is zero somewhere. Now I need another statement to see why that's a contradiction. So now what I'm going to do is make a statement which contradicts this. I'm going to compute the derivative and show that it can never be zero. So this is a problem. How can my derivative both be zero and non-zero? So also to use this second half, it's weird because I have to find two separate contradictory statements and show that they contradict one another. So my first statement is, I've used Rolle's theorem to assume under the assumption I have two distinct real roots that I have a point where my derivative is zero. So we've argued on one half that because of Rolle's theorem, if I assume that I have two distinct real roots, that I have to have that my derivative is zero somewhere. So we've argued that somewhere in between our two real roots, x1 and x2, our derivative is zero by Rolle's theorem. Now what we're going to do is actually compute the derivative and show that it's always positive and that contradicts this statement. So the derivative is 2019 x to the 2018 plus 2020, which is always strictly larger than zero. 2020 is a positive number x any number that goes into an even exponent is going to be a positive number so this thing is entirely positive so our derivative we've said is for all x in r so for every real number my derivative is strictly positive and 
our derivative is zero for some c in r, which is specifically in this, and that's what the contradiction is. These two statements contradict each other. You cannot have that the derivative is both strictly positive for every real number and the derivative is equal to zero for some real number. Therefore, f of x has at most one real root, so we saw that f of two was greater than zero and f of zero was less than zero, which implies by the intermediate value theorem there is at least one real root. C and Rolle's theorem and reductio ad absurdum proof by contradiction argument shows that there is at most one real root. These two things combined show that there is exactly one real root for f of x. Coincidentally, <laughs> f of 1 is 1 to the 2019 plus 2020 times 1 minus 2021, which is 2021 minus 2021, which is 0. <laughs> The root is one. <laughs> that was an accident, it turns out, but it serves my purpose.